Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Shivangi Mishra. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India revises COVID guidelines for arrivals from six countries. Pakistan's forex reserves fall to eight-year low. Citizens irk due to soaring inflation. And G7 tells Taliban to urgently reverse ban on women aid workers. And now for all the details. Amid rising COVID-19 cases in some countries, India on Friday issued revised guidelines making negative COVID reports mandatory from January 1, 2023 for visitors from six Asian destinations, including China, Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea, Singapore and Thailand. As of Friday, active caseload in India stood at 3,609. India's Ministry of Civil Aviation on Friday issued revised COVID guidelines for international passengers, making RT-PCR negative test report compulsory for travellers from six Asian nations in the wake of a surge in infections in those countries. The ministry said from January 1, 2023, a pre-departure RT-PCR negative test report will be mandatory for passengers from China, Singapore, Hong Kong, Korea, Thailand and Japan. Travellers from these countries will have to upload their test result on Air Sovida portal before their departure. This will be in addition to the random tests on 2% of all international passengers arriving in India. The centre government earlier this month asked India states to keep a lookout for any new variants and urged people to wear masks in crowded areas. India has also logged four cases of the Omicron sub-variant BF.7 which is driving the huge COVID surge in China. If we keep the COVID-19, we will do appropriate behavior. I will tell you this, behave yourself, COVID appropriate behavior and mask. Lagayin. Mask ko apne dress code in the new year. Ki. India on Friday reported 243 new coronavirus cases, taking the active case load to 3,609. Earlier this week, health authorities across the country also conducted mock drills to check readiness after a global rise in cases. A catastrophic second wave in India last year, driven largely by Delta variant, had ravaged the country's health system. Indian cricketer Rishabh Panth, who met with an accident in India's northern Uttarakhand state on Friday morning, is in a stable condition in hospital. Pant was a part of the Indian Test squad that sealed a 2-0 series victory over Bangladesh this month. Indian wicketkeeper batsman Rishabh Pant met with an accident near Roorkee in northern Uttarakhand state early on Friday morning and suffered injuries after his car rammed into road dividers and later caught fire. Pant, who is reportedly out of danger, was on his way to his hometown from Delhi when the accident occurred. Police said he was alone in the car when it crashed and lost control of the vehicle when he dozed off. Reports suggested that after Pant's car collided with the traffic divider, the cricketer had to break open a window to escape the vehicle which was engulfed in flames. Or initially, doctors ki team unki dekhbhal kar rahi hai, under evaluation hai wo. Or kuch jancho ke baad hi hum aage detail bata paayenge. Or filal wo sthir hai, or aisi koi chinta ki baat abhi lag nahi rahi hai. Messages poured in on social media wishing Pant a speedy recovery, including by former Indian skipper Virat Kohli and Australia's Ricky Ponting. Pant was part of the India squad that sealed a 2-0 series victory over Bangladesh this month. He was not named in their 2020 and ODA squads for matches against Sri Lanka next month. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's forex reserves have dropped to the lowest level in eight years after declining by 294 million US dollars to reach 5.821 billion dollars. 
Residents in Lahore city expressed they are upset and worried about the future as the ongoing economic crisis has made their lives miserable. A report. Pakistan's foreign exchange reserves decreased by 294 million US dollars to 5,821.9 million US dollars during the week ending December 23. The State Bank of Pakistan said on Thursday, the lowest level since April 2014. The total liquid foreign reserves held by the country, however, stood at 11.71 billion US dollars, the Central Bank said. This comes as Finance Minister Ishak Dar earlier on Wednesday admitted that Pakistan is in a tight position but assured it won't reach a default situation amid growing concerns. Residents in Lahore city said they are upset and worried for the future as the ongoing economic crisis has led to ever-rising inflation, making their lives miserable. They blame the government has failed to control the frequent hike in prices of all commodities, including daily food essentials. Global Ratings Agency S&P Global last week cut Pakistan's long-term sovereign credit rating by one notch to reflect a continued weakening of the country's external, physical and economic metrics. This year's severe floods, surging food and energy inflation, as well as rising global interest rates are also expected to depress Pakistan's economic and fiscal outcomes with refinancing challenges over the medium term, the report said. Moving on, traders and business owners in Pakistan's financial capital, Karachi, have expressed their disagreement with the government's decision to early closure of shops and restaurants for energy conservation. They said, while they are already facing losses, the recent order will lead to the shutting of their businesses. Business owners in Pakistan's economic hub Karachi have expressed their disagreement with the federal government's decision to close shops by 8 p.m. and restaurants by 10 p.m. as part of the National Energy Conservation Plan. Traders said the decision will harm their businesses significantly as their peak hours are usually in the evening. They complain while there is already very limited business due to inflation, government's move may lead to them shutting down their businesses forever. This will create a situation like Sri Lanka, a trader said. The South Asian nation is undergoing an energy crisis with residents facing limited supply and prolonged hours of load shedding of both electricity and gas. The energy saving plan is also intended to relieve the burden on the country's foreign reserves that are being doled out every year for the import of oil and gas to ensure power production. In news from Afghanistan, the foreign ministers of G7 countries have called on Afghanistan's Taliban rulers to urgently reverse a ban on women working in the war-ravaged country's aid sector. In a joint statement, they said that they were gravely concerned over the Taliban's reckless and dangerous order that puts at risk millions of Afghans who depend on humanitarian assistance for their survival. The foreign ministers of Group of Seven, the G7 grouping of developed countries and several other Western democracies on Thursday called on Afghanistan's Taliban rulers to urgently reverse a ban on women working in the war-wrecked country's aid sector. The G7 ministers along with those of Australia, Denmark, Norway, Switzerland and Netherlands said in a joint statement they were gravely concerned that the Taliban's reckless and dangerous order puts at risk millions of Afghans who depend on humanitarian assistance for their survival. 
The statement added that unless women participate in aid delivery in Afghanistan, NGOs will be unable to reach the country's most vulnerable people to provide food, medicine, winterization and services they need to live. Meanwhile, a senior UN official said on Thursday that UN aid chief Martin Griffiths will visit Afghanistan in the coming weeks and seek to meet the highest possible Taliban officials over the ban on women who make up roughly 30% of aid workers. Ramiz Alagbarov, UN aid coordinator in Afghanistan, said humanitarian needs of the Afghan people are absolutely enormous and it's important to continue to stay and deliver. Since the return of the Taliban to Afghanistan in August 2021, alas systematic attacks on the rights of women and girls and the use of violence including torture and enforced disappearances have created a culture of fear in the Afghan society. In news from Bangladesh, long queues formed in the Bangladeshi capital Dhaka on Thursday as people waited for hours to catch a ride on the city's first metro train. It took six years to complete the first line, with the full network set to encompass six routes and more than 100 stations. Excited residents in Bangladesh's capital, Dhaka, formed long queues in the early hours of Thursday, patiently waiting for their turn to catch a train ride on the city's first metro rail system. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina on Wednesday opened Line 6, the first metro line of the mass rapid transit system, which took approximately six years to complete. Partially funded by Japan, the line is expected to transport some 60,000 passengers each hour and help elevate traffic jams in the congested city of 20 million. A commuter said it seems like a dream has come true. <laughs> Construction of the Line 6 project, which extends the line of Kamlapur from Motiji, costs nearly 3.3 billion US dollars, according to media reports. Planners hope the first line will be used by around 60,000 people every hour and so far it's getting a warm welcome from Dhaka residents. Authorities in Anantanag in India's Jammu and Kashmir organized a winter tourism festival this week which attracted a large number of visitors to famous tourist destination of Vedinag. The festival also witnessed cultural programs by school children and folk artists. Take a look. In a bid to promote tourism during winters, the district administration of Anantag in India's Jammu and Kashmir this week organized a winter tourism festival in the famous tourist destination Verinag. The festival witnessed participation of people from different walks of life, including a large number of tourists. Different departments of JNK government and local entrepreneurs set up stalls during the event promoting the local products. The festival also witnessed cultural programs by school children and folk artists. The participants lauded the step taken by the administration and said such festivals should also be held in other seasons. So, this time, we are trying to do this kind of festival so that here, the winters, we have a lot of tourists here, we have a lot of footfall here. And because this is the main stage of the economy here, it is tourism based. As much as we can उनका स्वागत करेंगे जितने हमारी जो हॉस्पिटैलिटी है या सर्विसेज प्रोवाइड करेंगे और टूरिस्ट जो हैं यहाँ भी आएंगे उसी की तरफ एक कोशिश है इस तरह के फेस्टिवल्स हम करते रहेंगे और कोशिश रहेगी कि यहाँ पे भी जो टूरिस्ट का फुटफॉल है वो बढ़ जाए। Famous for the Mughal Gardens, the town always attracts good number of visitors in summer season. Tourism in the mainstay of the Kashmir Valley's economy and the sector is gradually recovering from the woes of coronavirus pandemic. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline. And follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. 
breaking news and views from India.